Welcome back. Here's a uh, brief little visual overview slash partial review of a Rolex Submariner. Those of you that have been to my site before know that I've already done a review on this watch. It's actually in two parts. However, you'll also know if you've seen that, that the camera work was pretty mediocre. So I've improved my equipment since then and thought I'd give you guys a little better taste of what this watch actually looks like. And it's been sitting in my safe for quite a while, so uh, I think we can actually go ahead and get it set up too. So. Let's take a look at the dial here. Um, this model is a U-series. It was uh, produced, I believe, between the years of 97 and 98. Um, it's, uh, since it's an automatic watch, even just taking it out of the safe, as you can see, is already partially wound it. But to get this set up, let's unwind the crown. We'll pull it out. There, and you'll see the movement has stopped. It's got a hacking movement. Let's go all the way around the dial at least once here so I can uh, figure out if we're in the morning, a.m. or p.m. Alright, the date just changed so now we're in morning. So here in the U.S. it's uh, about 4.30 here. Go around, now we're past noon. And it's about 4.40 I believe. So we'll push the crown in one notch. Get the movement and start turning again. Now if we turn this here, see, maybe it's this way. It's been a while. I oh, pushed it in too far, I think. Come on. Oh, there we go. Today is the 21st of August. If I push it in all the way without screwing it down, I'm in winding mode so I can wind the watch. And like I said, it's been sitting for quite a while, so it shouldn't have much of a power reserve. And then to uh, make it watertight again, you see this little black seal right here? Oh, maybe you can't. <laughs> Let's get out of there. You gotta hold the crown in and you turn, and it will wind back up onto its stem. Um, here's the infamous diving bezel. It's unidirectional. It only goes one way, so you can't add time when you're underwater, thankfully. Um, you might run out of oxygen that way. Um, for those that you don't know, this is to uh, keep track of the time you have had spent underwater. So if I went underwater now, I'd turn the bezel to or I went underwater. And uh, obviously as time passes, you can see how long you've been underwater. And like I said, it only goes one way, so you can't take away time, you can only add time. So you shouldn't be running out of oxygen when you're underwater, thankfully. And those of you familiar with the Rolex 16610, this model, you'll know that this is 120 clicks. A lot of fakes, I've been told, only do about half that. We can zoom in on the dial here. There's the famous Rolex Oyster Perpetual Date. Submariner, 1,000 feet, 300 meters, pearl chronometer, officially certified. That's a pretty timeless look there. James Bond wore this watch in the 60s, if you've seen any early Bond movies. There's the infamous trip lock crown, Rolex's designation for waterproof. Um, mine is a U-series, like I mentioned, so there's still the holes for your... Uh, Bracelet newer ones don't have these. They have the push pins underneath access. And nice looking view there. Oops. There's the plain case back. Um, I'm assuming when this thing would have knew it would have had one of those holographic seals on it. However, as most people do, they take them off at some point. Mine's no longer on there. And here's the infamous Chintzy Rolex clasp. And the uh, Rolex symbol there. There's your crown. The stamped bracelet. Swiss made. You push here. Here's your diver's extension. On the older type bracelets, it's just a pop out like this. Here, click back in. Pretty sturdy bracelet. Pretty uh, thin as well. 
and these are uh, screw out links. Um, a lot of Omegas use push pins, unfortunately. Rolex, you can see there, they use screws. So you can adjust this at home. This uses the Rolex in house 3135 movement. And um, it's supposed to be pretty much a bulletproof movement. Mine's been great to me. I know a lot of people that have been lazy and haven't serviced theirs. You're supposed to get it serviced, I believe, every five years. I've only had mine about two, but I know people that have never got them serviced and they still run beautifully. I'm going to get mine serviced to be safe when the time comes, but uh, it's got a pretty good reputation for being a pretty bulletproof movement. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this little overview, and um, check out some of my other videos, and I'll leave you with the, uh, the squeaking uh, move of the second hand here.